Hi, this is Arthur Wassum. I uh, come to you from my little recording studio that I got here. Um, I'm going to be uh, reading to you uh, 10 pages of a story that I wrote for a friend of mine. She's a producer in uh, Los Angeles. Her name's Linda, and uh, what, I, what I was doing, she had just gotten her Screen Actors Guild card, and so as a little gift, I said, well, what did name your kids? Give me, uh, if you were going to pitch a movie, what would you like to pitch? At the time of year, uh, she had heard some people were looking for Christmas movies. So I wrote a Christmas movie for her. Now, this isn't the typical Lifetime Hallmark eight-act movie that, you know, follows the same format. But it's close. It's really close. So what I want to do, though, is just read to you the first ten pages. I hope you enjoy them. Um, all the names have been... Well, actually, the names of her kids and herself. and blah, blah, blah. You, 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 If you know anything about me, I write stories for my friends. Anyway, so this is, uh, this is called Modern Manger, and these are the first ten pages. Interior Office Day. Art is Xerxes. Get it? Art is Xerxes. A man in his modern plaid suit but with a monk's halo haircut sits behind a desk with a tablet looking at a file. There's a knock on the door. Nicole, a woman in her 30s with long blonde hair, enters. Nicole, you want to see me, boss? Art is Xerxes. Yes, Nicole, please come in. Nicole comes in and seeing no sh chair, she places her hand on the ground and as she lifts it, a chair appears. She takes a seat. Nicole, I'm sorry. Artaxerxes continued, Nicole, we have a problem. The people on Earth have done a great job on personal freedom, but they have replaced so much of their lives with technology that they are losing their ability to interrelate. Nicole, we use technology also, and it hasn't affected us. Artaxerxes, not yet. I have an assignment for you. Nicole, of course I'll do my best, but I haven't been in the field for a very long time. Artaxerxes, I understand. Your target is a man, young man named Luke. He's very much alone. Artaxerxes hands her his tablet and picks up another from the table in front of him. Rising, he holds the tablet up and it grows into a 60-inch HDTV. It says here that he, Nicole, it says here that he has a family. Artaxerxes, a mother that works all night as a nurse. She comes home exhausted and falls asleep. His father has been out of work for months but is hiding it from the family. During the day, he's at a pool hall and that a bar at night. Luke goes to a private school about 20 miles from their home and is gone from 7 in the morning till after 5 at night. He's alone then till his mother gets up around 9 o'clock. Nicole, so he really doesn't have a family. Artaxerxes, no, not really. I mean, they love him. They just have no way of telling him, and he has no way of knowing. Nicole, what's my mission? I want you to let him know that he is loved and that he is not only worthy to be loved, but to love others as well. Nicole, there's a great plan for him, and he is capable of so much love, as all humans are. You just have to find a way for him to realize it. Nicole, got it. Anything else? Artaxerxes, yes. The world is connecting in amazing ways, but people are still feeling more and more isolated. I'd like you to find a way to fix this. Uh, fix the world? I'll do my best. At that, she got up and put a tablet next to her purse, and it vanishes. Into the purse. Uh, walking to the door, she turns to Artaxerxes and smiles as she fades into the door. Exterior Park Day. Luke is riding a bike down a path. There is a college boy riding towards him. They are heading towards each other. Neither is moving. It's a game of chicken. They crash. The college boy jumps up and sticks his knee into Luke's chest, pinning him on the ground. You stupid little piece of shit. Next time you see me, you better move. Luke doesn't say anything. The college boy gets up. College boy, continue. Freaking retard. He gets his bike, picks it up, and rides off. Luke sits up. Luke, that was awesome. He looks at his bike, and there's only a little damage to the front wheel. It needs to be straightened. He puts it between his legs and fixes it. Jumping back, he notices a couple of workmen building a shelter in the middle of the park. Luke continued, What are you guys building? Workman, You can't tell? Luke, Not really. Workman, It's a manger. Luke, What's a manger? Workman, You know what a manger is. This place where Jesus was born. Luke, Well, I know what kind of a manger are. What are you putting it here for? Workman, Because that's what the work order says to do. 
Luke shreds it off and goes to a swing set about 50 feet away. Swinging, he watches the men. Time lapse, lapses and the men have left. It's getting dark, so Luke takes off also. Interior house, evening. Luke's house is made up of a very small 300-square-foot living room with a 200-square-foot kitchen. No dining room and a three-bedroom with one bath in the whole house. The furniture is old and well used. It may be the third or fourth owner's. He goes into the kitchen and pulls out an electric skillet, adding oil and popcorn. He heats and shakes. Luke's entered the living, Luke enters the living room and turns on TV. Sitting on the couch with his bowl of popcorn, he just changes the channel over and over again, not finding anything to watch. When the bowl is empty again, he puts the jacket, turns on the TV, and heads out the door. Exterior park, night. Luke walks up to the manger and stops dead in his tracks. There's animals. There's a goat. One sheep, one donkey, one baby calf, all in a space, much too small for him. Crammed in the middle is a statue of Joseph Mary in a cradle with a baby Jesus. Luke, hey guys. No one moves at all. Luke, you guys all by yourselves? He reaches in and the donkey walks up. Luke starts to pet the donkey. They're just going to keep you out here? It's going to get cold tonight. Hey, Mr. Sheep, you want to get petted? The goat walks over and puts two legs on the fence. Luke starts petting him, and he gets a bit bitey. Hey, Mr. Billy Goat, I'm not food, but I have an idea. If you guys can make it through the night, I'll bring you a treat tomorrow. Interior carpool, day. Luke is on the back in the middle and strains to look at the manger as they drive by. When he sees his animal friends, he leans back. Interior house, day. Luke runs in and opens the refrigerator. Velveeta cheese, crackers, a half a McDonald's apple pie. He packs it all into a brown paper bag and starts to make more popcorn. Exterior park, night. Luke again walks up to the manger and stops. There's a lady standing by his animals. He turns to walk away. Nicole, did you come to see the manger? Luke, no, not really. Nicole, did you come to see the animals? Luke, kind of. Nicole, well, come on over. Luke walks over slowly. Luke, do you like animals? Nicole, I love them. Luke, me too. Nicole, I wish I had something for them. Luke, like what? Nicole, you know, food. I think donkeys like carrots and apples, grass for the goats and sheep. Luke, well, I did bring them some snacks. Nicole, like what? Luke takes out his small bag. Nicole looks up. Hmm, not much of them here to eat, but a little might not be too bad. We can eat it with them. They begin to feed the animals and themselves. Interior house, day. Luke runs in and opens up the refrigerator door. Nothing. Empty. Luke, half a stick of butter and some baking soda. He opens up the pantry and takes out more popcorn. Exterior park, night. Luke walks up with his small bag of popcorn. This is really cold. Snowflakes are beginning to fall. Luke, hey guys. Now all the animals are coming over to him. Luke, I can't believe they don't even bring you any blankets or anything. Nicole, out of nowhere. Luke, hey Luke. Luke, hey Nicole. Nicole, it's a little cold for you to be out here, isn't it? Luke, well it's cold for them too. It seems so mean to leave them here by themselves. Nicole, but you're here. Luke takes out his popcorn and starts to feed the billy goat. Nicole continued, I brought some food also. Nicole pulls out a bag of carrots and hands them to Luke. Wow, these are really going to like these. And here's some apple and there's also some celery. Luke, you guys are going to have a feast tonight. Nicole, you know, you can eat some also. Luke, no, nah, I better not. They need their warmth. Nicole, you would rather feed the animals than eat yourself. Luke, I guess. Nicole, aren't you hungry? Luke, I ate at school during the day. You know, Nicole, you know, I think you're a very special kid. Luke, no, nah, I'm pretty sure I'm not. Nicole, Luke, how many kids do you think live around here? Luke, I don't know. I don't know any, really. Nicole, I do, and there are a couple hundred. How many kids do you think have seen this manger? Luke, I don't know. Nicole, how many kids have been here every night this week? Luke, just me. Sorry, it's getting me. <laughs> I write stories that get me. Anyway, Nicole, out of all the kids, hundreds of them, and their parents, you're the only one who cares about these animals. You come every night, and even when you have nothing to give them, you give them yourself and to keep them company. I think that's pretty special. 
I think there's an honorable and I think that it's honorable and deserving of a special blessing. You have something people need, compassion and heart. I just wanted you to know that I appreciate all that you've done. Luke, thank you, Nicole. You know, you come out a lot also, Nicole. Not every night, and I really don't come for the animals. Luke, really? Nicole, really? I mostly come because I think you're awesome. Luke, uh, thank you, but I don't see it, but thank you. Nicole, you will. Interior house later. Luke opens the door to his house and his mom, a rather tall woman with short, dirty blonde hair, and his dad, a rather large man, begin to go bald or decorating a tree. What's going on? Well, it's about time you got home. Dad, it's about time you got home. Mom, where have you been? Luke, I was with some friends. Mom, well, I got a holiday bonus and we went out about the tree and some decorations. Dad, we even went out to the store and did a little shopping. Mom, come here. You can help me with the lights. Luke grabs a box and opens it, not really knowing what to do, so he starts hanging lights on the tree. Mom continued, Luke, you can go in the bag and get the angel. It's for the top. Luke's in the bag and pulls out a gold box. Looking at it, he gets a big grin on his face. It's Nicole! Luke, I know her. Dad, her who? Luke, the angel. Her name is Nicole, and she's a friend of mine. Mom, an angel is your friend? Luke, yep, she visits me at the manger in the park. You know the one with the animals? They're my friends also. Mom, honey, you know you're not supposed to talk to strangers. Luke, I know, but she's cool. And that was the first ten pages. Ooh of uh, the story Modern Manger, written by Arthur Wasson, for my friend Linda. Thank you.